Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be giving you my thoughts on the 16 inch M1 Max that I've been using as a daily driver for the past three months. Well, I use both Mac and Windows equally, but I do use the Mac for much of the work I do in preparing my videos and for software development work. So I will talk about the good and the bad and the one real regret I have by purchasing this model. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Sam and I do tech reviews and tutorials to help you become a better digital citizen. Now on with the video. So my current setup is to have the MacBook docked on my desk using the HyperDock that I did an unboxing in a previous video, which I'll have linked here and in the description below. Uh, I have a couple of gripes with the dock, which I think has to do more with my workflow than the device itself but I just started using it and at some point I will do a follow-up video with more in-depth review. But for now, it's been useful. Uh, and yes, my desk is somewhat messy. I don't have a dedicated testing workbench area, so everything is done on this one desk. So both Mac minis, the MacBook Pro on the dock, and my Windows desktop all live here with monitor switches. And since this is where I also do my nine to five, I have to make sure that the setup is not interrupted. So once I figure out how to fix this tangle of wires, I will do a desk setup video and show you how I handle having the ability to use four different computers from essentially one set of monitors. So I also have a uplift stand-up desk, so that makes the wiring a little bit more complicated because I have to take into account how the wires will stretch as I raise the desk. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it when it comes out. So now on to the MacBook. Short answer, I love it. Uh, it has considerably sped up my workflow and many of the things I have to accomplish and it is fantastic not having to look at beach balls and fiddling my thumbs basically just waiting for some processing or render to finish. Plus not having to hear those fans or worrying it will, uh, you know, spontaneously combust. It's very nice. So the first area where I think it has been a huge time saver for me is video editing. The 4K video files from my camera tend to be very large, um, sometimes over 200 gigabytes in size. Final Cut handles them with ease, uh, and I used to use the M1 Mac Mini, which was fine for doing video editing work, but there were many occasions where I had to work with proxies to prevent slowdowns. But ever since I bought the MacBook, I have been exclusively using it for all my video work and am just not going back. Uh, just the fact that I don't have to create proxies anymore has been a huge time saver. And even if I have to use proxies, they get generated so much quicker barely slows me down. Uh, so just so you can get an idea of performance, I typically have Parallels open with uh, Windows 11 running at the same time as I'm editing videos while through the dock uh, driving both external monitors behind me. And I haven't noticed any slowdown at all. Uh, even after three months, I'm just still amazed by, by this machine. Nothing seems to phase it. So the battery life is crazy good and I rarely worry about running out of juice. One video I was editing, I had Final Cut open, uh, working on Photoshop and Apple Motion at the same time, just trying to create some stupid little effect. And I was doing this for like three plus hours and the battery only went down to 60%. My previous MacBook would go to 50% just watching a 90 minute movie. Now the ports. I love the ports they have included. I haven't had the need to use any dongles other than a few USB-A thumb drives, but I'm not really a big issue for me. Uh, it would have been nice to have one, but, but USB-A is a slow dying standard, so whatever, that's fine. Um, I have a, a pair of uh, 250 ohm studio headphones that I use for editing, and the new high impedance audio jack does drive them surprisingly well. I still need an amp to drive them properly, but I would suspect like the 80 ohm kind uh, probably sound nice and loud. One other thing, in my one month review, I mentioned that the HDMI port was only one way, meaning just only output only to external monitors. And that did bite me a bit. Uh, I had to buy the, the Camlink 4K capture card in order to be able to use my mirrorless camera uh, during screen captures. And honestly, for the price of this laptop, 
having that option would have been nice. Yes, this is a niche use by a creator, but then again, they geared this laptop towards creative professionals, so having this is not that much of a stretch. Now, after using this machine for a while, the notch has become extremely annoying. It is not the visual part that bothers me, I'm fine with that, but what really annoys me is the bad implementation from macOS Monterey. When icons start getting hidden behind the notch with no way to access them, then it becomes a real pain. I started a screen capture that places an icon on the menu bar so you can start and pause the recording, you know, that sort of thing. And when I was done, I wanted to stop it and the icon was behind the notch. I couldn't get to it. Luckily, there was a keyboard shortcut, but come on, Apple. Monterey was in development for over a year and you, you knew about the notch. There's just no excuse for this. Am I to believe that a whole team of test engineers did not experience this? This is not an issue when docked, luckily, and the menu bar works as you would normally expect it to. But with WWDC about four months away, and this is still an issue, yeah, uh, that's just unacceptable to me. Now, the one big regret I have with purchasing this particular Mac, and I feel like an idiot because I should have known better. I only purchased a two terabyte hard drive because I just couldn't justify the extra $600 to upgrade to a four terabyte drive. So not an issue for 99% of my workflow, except when I'm editing video. Those 4K files are huge. And sometimes I work with multiple cameras, such as one angle is me talking and the other is just over my desk doing a review. When I edit those files along with B-roll shots and any other effects that I add, makes the whole project well over a terabyte. Uh, the first time I saw a pop-up that I'm out of space, I thought it was a fluke, and that's when it hit me that I made a big mistake by choosing the amount of space that I did. So, after going through my options, such as using proxies again for every project, I figured my best option was to start using an external drive, where at least I can have all of my footage and uh, project files in one location. So, I bought this uh, Samsung T7 SSD. Um, it cost me about $230, and surprisingly, these drives are pretty fast over USB-C. And when I tested the export time from Final Cut for one of my projects, it only added about 90 seconds to the whole rendering process. So, not terribly bad. Plus, it allows me to keep all my work in one drive. So, the T7 itself is great, uh, and a very fast drive for what it is. I edit videos directly off of it, and uh, I rarely see any beach balls, and, but it's not ideal. Uh, this has caused me to slow down a bit since I now have to use an external drive for some of my workflows. And so in the end, paying the extra $600 might have been worth it, considering the T7 was 230 for, for two terabytes. So live and learn, I guess. So the one real gripe I have with Apple, and this just annoys not just me, but pretty much everybody, is I hate that you cannot upgrade the SSD space. There's absolutely no technical reason why you can't upgrade the SSD yourself. Just look at one of the teardowns from iFixit, where it shows you the motherboard and the SSD slots. I mean, just adding a retention clip to lock an SSD chip in place will not steal any space from the whole laptop. I don't get how Apple loses here. If they're worried about people using third-party drives, they could limit it to only allow their own SSDs to be installed, and they could probably make extra profit from people like me upgrading. And if it's a warranty thing, I would have no problem going to the Genius Bar and have them do it so I don't avoid my warranty. At least give me the option to upgrade my space. Now, I'm locked in, and there's no way I'm buying another one, obviously. So, if you're a power user, considering one of these new M1 MacBooks, 32 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage has to be the absolute minimum in my opinion. So if you wear multiple hats and you do dev work or any type of video work, you should definitely lean to the 32 gigabytes of RAM if you choose anything other than the max. And four terabytes should be the minimum if you can afford it. Otherwise, you will be buying several externals, which essentially will cost the same 
for less performance. Oh, and if you're watching this on Monday, February 28th, the Part-Time YouTuber Academy is opening up registration for its next cohort. If you want to learn how to make professional videos for YouTube, this is one of the best courses out there for that. I will have an affiliate link below so you can click and learn more. If you want to see an unboxing and my initial thoughts on the Hyper MacBook dock that I've been using, check out my video up here. Thank you for watching.